Okay, uh, today we're just going to wing it and I'm just going to kind of show you how I approach photo editing in general. So I've got this image here that I took um, just kind of on the fly while I was teaching some students in the field and uh, grabbed a couple captures of this butterfly. So, uh, you know, not ideal. I would have liked it to fill the frame a little bit more. Um, the lighting's kind of harsh, so it's okay. It's definitely not perfect, but there are th certain things that I can do to just make it better. So this is just about making any image that you take a little bit better. So. I'm in the develop module in Lightroom and I'm just going to run through some of the basics here and this was a raw photo so I have some options here of changing the white balance. So I'm going to go through and, and just change them kind of at random and see if it comes up with some colors that I like a little bit better. I'm going to put it on auto, it thinks it should be a little bit more blue. I'm actually going to just go with as shot, I think it looks fine like that and I am going to see what happens when I do dehaze. Now that dehaze slider, just be real careful with it, it can get really harsh. So just a little bit, maybe a little bit of texture because I really want to see this guy pop, but I don't want to do too much globally. Um, I actually don't do a lot of global adjustments. I tend to keep it pretty subdued when I do the global adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of an adjustment brush just on the butterfly here. Now my automatic setting here is to kind of do the exposure plus two, which is ridiculous. So let's bring that down. So I do want to brighten him up just a little bit, just to bring kind of a little bit more attention to him. And so I don't want to go crazy, but just a little bit is okay as long as I don't blow any of those highlights. And I'm actually going to bring the black down, which gives him just a little bit more contrast. It's not a big adjustment, it's just an adjustment. So I'm going to add another brush, and this one I'm going to make really big, because what I want to do is I just want to tone down, now granted it's again two stops over, just try to ignore that. So I want to kind of tone down all of this green around him to essentially cause a, a vignette. So let's double click that and bring it back down. Okay, so I'm going to bring down the exposure a little bit just of his surroundings. If, if I go too far, things start to look a little weird. So just a little bit, and there we go. So if I do just a quick before and after, so here's before and here's after, and I've basically adjusted the lighting to focus more attention on my subject, than the background because this background is very bright it was you know 11 30 in the morning bright sun not what you know not ideal so let's do that and let's give it a crop because we don't want him dead center that's definitely a no-no in my book if i come too far up from the bottom i'm cutting off that leaf does it matter does it not um, i tend to not want little tips of leaves running right into the edge. That's a personal preference of mine. I just try to avoid it. And the same thing over here, if I'm going to crop this side off, I definitely do not want that kind of sticking in at the edge. So it's like if you're going to crop it, crop it like you mean it, or leave it in. So in this case, I'm going to leave it in. And the same thing with this little flower in the background. If I bring this down, then I've got a bright spot right along the edge, and I don't want to do that. So there we go. Happier with that. Many times I will be completely satisfied at this point, but I'm just kind of curious. So I'm going to bring this into Photoshop and see what else I can come up with. I'm kind of curious as to what this would look like with a painterly look. Just curious. So I'm going to duplicate my background layer and I'm going to go into Topaz. Whenever I'm in this program, or I mean honestly any program, I, I tend to just kind of hop through the preset panel just to see if there's any, you know, starting point where I'd like to go, and that's not one of them. So I'm going to keep going. 
I kind of like the Van Gogh look on this one. Let's try watercolor. Hmm. All right, so I hit apply, and now I'm going to try some different brush strokes. I'm going to play with my sliders a little bit here. All right, now I'm going to click OK with this, but it doesn't mean that I am sticking with it 100%. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. And it has to do with the fact that I put it in a layer. So now I'm going to add a layer mask. And I'm going to come in here with my brush, not my logo. And it is a white mask, so I need to make sure that my brush is black. So I'm going to flip that, or you can just type the X key. And the opacity of my brush up here is about 20%. So if I go 100%, uh, it's going to cut all the way through and see everything. But if I don't do that and I go like 30 or 40% on a painterly look, then I can kind of bring back some details little by little. So I just want to bring back a little bit of detail specifically on that face because I just think and again, personal preference, I know I, I do paint uh, myself, and so I know that you can totally get away with uh, some kind of smudgy faces, but I tend to like my, my eyes and my face pretty sharp. All right, now the Van Gogh did some funky things up here along the edge, which I'm not nuts about. Uh, could easily just crop those out. <laughs> Save myself some cloning time, honestly. And I'm going to add another layer and deal with those because I just can't stand them. So a little, little bit of work with my content aware spot healing brush should take care of that. There we go. Yeah, I definitely don't want the white random spots in my painting. They just kind of, they stand out. They're a little bit distracting and I'm going to get rid of them. I went back to my mask and I'm bringing back just a little bit more detail in these flowers so that they're not quite so painterly, just a little bit more detail in that low opacity brush. And I'm, I'm just using a track pad so it kind of allows me to just dab, 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 tap, 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 and it brings back a little bit more every time I click it. All right, let's turn that layer off and on, and that's our topaz because I definitely want to see specifically this water drop. So I'm going to bring back a little bit more detail so I can see that one in particular. Let's turn that off. So definitely have that one right there. It's kind of prominent. There's a little one right here. Might want to bring some of that back as well. Okay, so now I can see that water droplet and I can see all of my butterfly and it looks painterly but I can still make out detail in his face. I think that's pretty cool. It's fun. And just for kicks, let's add a texture to it. Why not? Okay, I kind of like this one, so I'm gonna try that and see what happens. And let's make it fit. You don't have to make it fit. You can do whatever you like, but I'm gonna do it this time. And I'm going to change the blending mode. So I actually like the way that this brightens the whole image with the light and, I'm sorry, the screen blending mode. And then I'm going to add a mask. And so I'm going to remove it. I'm just going to kind of use the texture as kind of like a, a vignette, textured vignette. That's kind of fun. And sometimes when I do textures, it tends to make the image a little bit flat. So I'm just going to do a quick levels adjustment and bring back some of that contrast. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Very cool. So I went from this image, uh, once I was done with Lightroom, to that one with a little topaz and a texture and you know, don't be afraid to, to have fun and just play uh, with your images. Thanks. I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.